Uh, I initially wanted to be a DP, realized that in Houston, where I'm based, there weren't any producers really not enough that knew what they were doing, right? I was tired of going on film sets and seeing what who's running this what's what's happening here right and spending a decade in the corporate world i was very used to like structures plans why are there not contingents you know so i just kind of shifted over into producing and through that process you know just started identifying gaps right uh and and just kind of expanded. So I guess an entrepreneur in the media space is mm-hmm. is an apt summary of that. Yeah, I, I I think we have more in common than at least I realized. Um, I did go to film school, um, much to my parents' chagrin. But um, the but I, after film school, I actually spent a bit of time selling insurance and uh, doing that sort of work, and I had a ton of weird side jobs while I lived in San Francisco while I was building my representation company. And eventually I was able to make it my full-time gig and was significantly happier about it, even if I made less money. Um, And that sounds a lot like what you just summarized as well. So it's a, uh, it's a hustle. I think most of us producers really understand because we've all, kind of been there and a lot of us a lot of those of us who are producers did it because we realized that there wasn't anybody doing this and it needed doing i don't think pretty much anybody goes into film to be a producer Um, no yeah (laughs) no because i mean i mean you know producers are always the bad guys right especially when you're coming at it from the artistic angle right the producers are the suits they're the money guys they're the rule guys they're the contract guy right right you're mm-hmm. looking snazzy yeah. yourself um and and <clears throat> you know when i was starting out i was directing and dp right mm-hmm. and so producers were always the guys telling me no we can't do that that's not on the budget that's not that's going to take you know and it was always like i hate these guys right <laughs> but you know, I quickly started to appreciate um, when I worked with a good producer, like, oh, right. Oh, right. So there is some good to it. And then slowly, just like, no, producers really can make or break something from an administrative perspective, right? Mm-hmm. Like, there, there's a there's a really key component of creating that type of, you know, Thing, I mean, as you know, I, you know, we both deal with sales and distribution, right? I mean, mm-hmm. such simple things as not getting the right wording in a contract with an actor can destroy a deal, right? Entirely. And it can also, not having that wording in it can also completely destroy all revenue for your film, even if you have already made it and spent the money on it. It's a really easy and costly mistake and it yeah yeah completely agree um it is interesting to be on what i guess a lot of people would perceive as the villain side of the equation but it's really more but all the good producers i know and even the I almost said even the good producers reps I know, but that's one person and they're in this room Um, (laughs) is a uh, it's really more about being a bridge and um, being something of a wall as well between the two sides and being true neutral. And it's not always an easy job to do that. Um, Yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, philosophically, one of the things, because I, you know, over over time, I'm finding myself kind of producing less. And um, as far as like on set production, right. Um, And I'm at a point now where I can be picky about that, right. I can choose which directors I want to work with. And, you know, it's not about like gig to gig to gig anymore, right. Mm -hmm. Um, but one of my biggest philosophies that I always talk to directors about is 
it's not my job to get involved in creative, right? And I think there's a lot of producers that make that mistake as they get really heavy handed in, right? Of course, I'm going to give feedback. I'm going to do this, right? But, um, you know, at the end of the day, if the director wants to do it, I'm going to let them do it in most cases, right? As long as it's in the budget. Right, (laughs) right. And, and... You know, but to your point about being that kind of, you know, intermediary, so to speak, or being that it's almost like a firewall, right? Mm -hmm. Like you're kind of the translator between the business and the creative, right? That's how I've always kind of viewed it. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've always told directors, my job is, you know, to get you what you need as we go through development, as it goes through production, you know, we kind of build this thing so that when we get to set, I can put you in a nice creative cocoon Mm -hmm. and then I will guard that cocoon. I'm the one outside of the cocoon dealing with all the fires, dealing with all the issues. So it's not bleeding into set, right? Mm -hmm. I don't, when I'm on set, I'm rarely actually down by the cameras. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't, I don't go down to set. I don't sit behind the monitors, you know, I mean, I'll go watch big scenes or key scenes or things, you know, where it's an expensive shot, of course. Right? But but for the most part, I kind of I kind of stay away. Right. I, I tend to kind of hang out in the room with the DITs and the data wranglers and just kind mm-hmm. of stay in there. People know they can come talk to me if they need to, but stay out of the way. Let let the art do its thing. Mm-hmm. Um. So, yeah, I mean, I think. And that was something I had to learn over time too, right? Was was that it is, you know, it, we do get placed on the villain side of the equation a lot, but really we're just, we're trying to get the completely not creative people and the creative people to speak the same language and march towards the same goal. Mm-hmm. That's totally true. Um, I don't think it's... The way I positioned it as a rep in the past is I'm basically a shark against other against bigger sharks, um, and it, it, the philosophy kind of still applies here, but it's less adversarial than that. It is really more about facilitating and letting your creatives exist in a bubble where they can be creative, but also further the end goals of the movie which is mainly getting it made um because if they don't they're not going to be able to eat and no one is and that's basically it so it's not being a producer is really more about being an enabler than anything else and at least that's my opinion of it 